Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is finally my coverage of the 2023 Gaithersburg Book Festival. The Gaithersburg Book Festival is this local to me book festival, which I think is growing in clout in like the national community. We have a lot of writers who simply have ties to DC, but but I think publishers are also sending a little more and more uh, as time goes on. And uh, there were something like 140 writers uh, who were doing panels and uh, signing books. And then there was other stuff as well. There was a local community of uh, writing workshops and people exhibiting their bookish related uh, wares. Uh, and uh, of course, there was the used library bookstore, which I love. Uh, and it was a really great time. I, I, I thought uh, it was a wonderful way to, I don't know, uh, start the week, end the week, however you think of uh, Saturday on the weekend. Uh, and in fact, I was uh, thinking that uh, it was going to rain, uh, given the weather uh, at, in the morning. Uh, but in fact, the day turned out really nice. And uh, my biggest uh, complaint is I prepped for rain and not for sun. And I was outside and <laughs> got a little sunburned. Uh, but uh, I think that's getting better now, too. Uh, and anyway, I created uh, a quick uh, montage sort of clip about what it was like to be there. So I will now share it with you. Another thing I really liked about this book fest, I didn't really get to it in the clip, is that I was able to meet up with some friends, which I don't actually do much at book fairs, so it was good for me to sort of slot some of that in. Um, so yeah, it was great to catch up with people. And and one of the friends I met up with, seen here, uh, named Claudia, she actually was one of the exhibitors. She was um, selling her own books uh, that she's been featured in same anthologies. And she's written a how-to book on uh, productivity scene here. Uh, I love the cover, but uh, she says <laughs> that uh, people get confused when it's not in fact about maps. <laughs> I also saw a BookTube Prize author there, which was kind of exciting, uh, especially since I had just read his uh, book officially for the BookTube Prize, uh, which is uh, a prize on uh, BookTube started by Robert at Barter Hordes, where we uh, judge the best in literary fiction and nonfiction published in English in the U.S. the year before. Uh, and I am judging nonfiction for this round, uh, and I had just uh, finished... Uh, uh, the Secret City by James Kerchick, which is about uh, gay culture in uh, 
Washington DC in like the latter half of uh, the 20th century. Uh, and I was debating, in fact, should I try like filming a clip of him talking? And then I thought maybe that would uh, be a little bit of bias because part of the booktube prize is um, that uh, we're not supposed to uh, be sharing our thoughts. And I guess that's a bit of a stretch to say it would be bias. And I also think it didn't really change my opinion of the book, but it was still uh, interesting to hear him talk. And uh, here's a picture. <laughs> And finally, I did get some books signed. You might have seen the pictures at the end of uh, my clip. Uh, I got a uh, book signed for my nephew, Owen. Uh, the Gaithersburg Book Festival is especially uh, meaningful to me now because five years ago he was born while I was at the Gaithersburg Book Festival and I was going to see him later in the weekend. I was so excited to share this book with him. And for me, I decided to go with, uh, for myself, Bookish People by Susan Cole. Um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, Susan Cole is also um, a local author, although I know this book has been uh, making a bit of a splash. Uh, and it is about a, a bookseller. And in fact, she was in a panel uh, with another author who was writing a similar book about bookselling, and they were being moderated by uh, Hannah Depp, who was in fact the bookseller at my local bookstore, Loyalty Books. I'll have the link down below. And another thing about this is, you know, it's a little lighter and fair than my usual. I'm trying to see if I can maybe go a little lighter sometimes. Uh, I mean, there's still some serious uh, content in uh, here, like uh, there's uh, the Charlottesville uh, uh, riots from uh, 2017, and uh, there's sort of forays into cancel culture and that sort of thing. But there's also a malfunctioning vacuum, which is a big part of the plot as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting to this. And I did, in fact, uh, take a little bit of a clip of uh, Susan Cole talking about her book, which I'll uh, show you now. I use this device, if you read the book, called the End of Day Report, which is a real report that the store managers would send out at the end of every day, summarizing what happened that day, everything from, you know, this book was mentioned on NPR and all the customers want the book, to, you know, a dog had an accident in the travel section, to, um, These are not at all based on end of day reports right, right, that have right, actually right. happened. This Never. is not fiction, this part. Um, but, you know, I promised the owners of the bookstore that I was not going to write an novel set in the bookstore because I had no intention doing that, but when I took a leave of absence, I was still on this end-of-day report distribution list, and I noticed the frequency with which the vacuum cleaner was broken, and it always came, like, amended with these notes, like, well, it is working, you just have to kick it a few times, or, you know, so that's how, that was kind of the origin of the book, but I also really just wanted to capture the realities of working in a bookstore, because everybody thinks you know, somebody that I know came in once and saw me working there, and she said, that's so cute. And I thought, no, this is not cute. This is like a very stressful job. So I wanted to capture the realities of what it's like to work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I first went to work at the bookstore, the genre title on the main new fiction shelf drove me crazy. I lobbied to get rid of it, but yeah. it's, still, it's still there. Because um, it is troubling the way you need to put your book in a certain box, but it's how publishing works, so I understand that. Um, as for the cover, yeah, I, I, again, I thought I'd written this very dark <laughs> comedy, and it came out with this, like, very cheerful happy, yeah. happy <laughs> cover. Yellow. And I've seen some readers complain online, like, wait, <laughs> this is about Charlotte, Charlotte's novel in this book, but... At the same time, I mean, my publisher has been great, and they are very marketing savvy, and they've done an amazing job with this book, so I kind of trust them to, you know, it doesn't, I, I've tried over the years to push back on a few different covers, and I said, you know, this looks like a cover only a woman would read, and they're like, only women buy fiction anyway, so we don't, we don't really care, so I've just learned you, you can only push back so much because if, if they don't like, if they aren't behind the cover and then the book doesn't do well, it's your fault for not liking the cover, so you try to go with the flow a little. Yeah. The truth. The truth. The truth. Yeah. Her, uh, my character, like Clemmy, who's the younger one who's booking the events, her kind of rebellious streak is that she wants to bring this poet to speak at the store, even though her boss 
we used to be a renegade and someone who wanted to take stands has become afraid of the world and just wants to hide. So that's kind of her way of asserting herself. But you know what Hannah says is true. We, we actually started at Politics and Press on the same day. Same day. We were like trained together. And you know, in a bookstore, I think you do at least have a kind of kinder, gentler customer base. But it's true. Every once in a while, if you're like, you know, some book didn't arrive in time or it got lost or something, it, it is kind of astonishing the way. You have a lot of emotions around yes. books. There's yes. a lot of emotions around books. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember you posting on Twitter, like, there is no such thing as a book emergency. I say that, like, <laughs> once a week, and people look at me like I'm insane. I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> this is, you know, this is a mantra. <laughs> right. okay. but, uh, um, so that's, that's Clunny's way of trying to you know, kind of have some control in, in standing up for one, what she wants to book, and also, you know, to some extent, the, the bookstore owner, because you can't really hide from the controversy. Even if you think you're hiding from controversy, you can have an event. I made this one up, but actually I didn't entirely, like a, you know, a book even about flower arranging can become controversial because of the you know carbon footprint of cutting flowers. So you can't predict where it's gonna come from and to just, even now in the job, to it still happens. Like, who would have thought protesters were going to show up at this very benign yeah. event? So to just kind of have a spine and keep going, if I in any way answered your question. I don't I know that I am. And that about covers it for me now. Uh, I will leave some links down below, including the Goodreads link uh, for Bookish People and also my friend Claudia's uh, home writing homepage if you'd like to know some more. And of course, also information on the Gaithersburg Book Festival. I'm already eagerly uh, looking forward to being back next year. And the bookish love continues. I hope to be back on this channel imminently. And, and I'm going to revive what I call my Mock Reads Choice Awards. It's a play on uh, the Goodreads Choice Awards. It's a way for me to try to read some front list, uh, actually, in my diet uh, before the Goodreads Choice Awards happen. Uh, and uh, this uh, month, I'm going to be focusing on some fantasy reads. So stay tuned for that. I hope you're all having a lovely time and uh, reading some great books. And if you've been to any book festivals lately, I'd love to hear about them. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, everyone. And I'll see you next time.